Hello everyone, in this video we're going to see the step-by-step -step process of building a denim pants. So here are the steps that we're going to follow. So step one, we're going to uh, arrange the shell patterns. Step two, we're going to uh, do the sewing and the simulation of those shell patterns. Step three, we're going to build the front pocket bags. Step four, we're going to build the zipper fly. Step five, we're going to add the back pockets, the internal waistband, as well as the belt loops. And finally, for step six, we're going to add the fabrics. We will fine tune our garment. And then finally, we will add the top stitches. For this video, we will uh, use already made patterns and we will show this um, process on uh, menswear denim. So I already have loaded my male model and I'm going to load my um, patterns as DXF. So here I have them here and I will select click right and then select out to workspace. I'm going to add them and they will appear in my 2D and 3D window as flat. So the first step that we're going to do is arranging those patterns, first the shell patterns around the avatar's body. So once they appear, I'm just going to bring the patterns all the way up. It can be up or on the side. It's just a matter to have a better access to um, my avatar's body when I will bring the arrangement points. So first, before arranging my patterns, I'm going to freeze the ones that I'm not going to need in this first arrangement. So I'm going to freeze my fly patterns as well as my belt loops, my pocket bags, this little pocket opening patterns here, my back pockets, the rest of my belt loops, and my internal waistband, so the one that is on top. So then I will click right either in the 2D or in the 3D window and I will select freeze. Here we have them frozen. So now we can start arranging our shell patterns on my arrangement points. So the strategy of uh, arranging the patterns for a denim pants or for any kind of um, more tricky garments is always to work from the outside. So from the shell towards the inside. Um, this is one strategy, um, there's multiple ways, um, but this is the one that I find to be the most easy. So I'm going to select my front leg, I'm going to bring my arrangement point with either Shift F, which is my short key, or I will go here on this little icon and select this um, icon with the blue dots here. Once they're there, then I'm going to arrange my front leg so i'm going to select it in the 2d window place it in the 3d so i select it by one click left here and i place it here with one click left if i feel that my patterns are merging a tiny bit or colliding a little bit too much inside my avatar's body i can always while the pattern is selected go down in my property editor and change the offset a little bit so I can bring it to 60 for example and do the same on the other side then I can arrange my back leg so this one I selected here I place it on this arrangement point so always make sure that when you select your patterns it will always arrange it according to the center point of the pattern so where this point is so you have to consider which arrangement points to place it on based on the center of your pattern, like that. Then I can also place my yoke. Um, so I can place it here and this one here. If I find that this is a little bit too high, I can select both. And again, go into my arrangement settings in property editor and change the position of the Y. So bring it a little bit more down. Then I can select my external waistband and place it on the arrangement point that is right in the back, lower back of my avatar. So these are the first patterns that I need to arrange. These are the shell pattern. 
the rest are frozen. Um, now we are ready to go on to the second step, which is sewing and simulating the shell patterns. So for this part, we're not going to, we don't necessarily need to start with a specific edge uh, to start sewing. So we can start wherever we want. So I'm going to start with the inseam. So I'm going to select my um, free sewing tool and I'm going to start to stitch from up to down. It can be on the other way. Just make sure that your mark is in the same direction here. So I do it on one side, then I can do it on the other side. So I go from the top to the bottom here and here from the top to the bottom. So I've sewn my inseam, now I can start stitching my, um, my outer seam. So here I just have to mind that I have this pocket opening, so I need to uh, make sure to stop at this notch that I see right here. So I place this notch to help me um, um, know uh, the length of my sewing line. So in your case, probably um, you will need to determine that to determine that on your own. So I'm going to go from all the way up, from the bottom to the top to that notch, and here from the bottom to the um, edge here or to the point here. I will do the same on the other side. So I'm from the bottom to that notch, here from the bottom to my top here. So I have my outer seam. I can now also stitch my um, back yoke. So these are quite easy. So I will go from left to right here, left to right, and here from right to left right to left like that. I can then stitch my um, center back crotch. So here I can, because I don't have any points in the middle, I could select my segment sewing tool. So I'm going to select my segment sewing tool and just um, connect both of those edge with one click for each part. So one click here, one click there, one click here, one click there, one click here, one click there. This seems to be pretty good. Now for the front crotch, uh, we're going to do a sewing line that is um, not going to be the final one. It's just so that it keeps closed um, and in order for the pants not to fold down when we will simulate. So I'm going to select again my free sewing tool and I'm just going to stitch all the way from the top to the bottom and here also from the top to the bottom. I know this is not the right um, let's say stitching line, but it's just a matter to close um, in order to close my patterns in a temporary way or my pants in a temporary temporary way. Um, then I just finally need to stitch my uh, waistband to my back yoke and my front leg patterns. <clears throat> so here I've also done some notches to help me figure out where to place each sewing lines. So I'm going to start from my center back here. So I'll go from this notch to this one, which will be exactly the same length as this top part of my yoke. So I'll do it on the other side as well. And I can do it also for my front. So here, as you see, there is the pocket that is missing. And this is going to be um, the sewing line that is, will be in between those two notches. So I'm gonna skip that. And I'm gonna go from this notch to the edge of my pattern and here from here to here. Then I will do the same on the other side. So I'm going to skip this part because this is where my pocket patterns are gonna be placed. And I'm going to go from here to here. Here I have a little extra um, length and that's just because it's gonna be stitched to the fly. So I'm gonna take care of that later. So I'm going to go from this notch to this notch, which will be then from here to here. Once that is done, then we can finally simulate this uh, first part. And we see that the pants is um, quite stable. In order to continue forwards, uh, what we can also do is, in order to 
prevent our pants to fall down, you can also freeze the waistband um, in a temporary manner. So that way, when we will place the front pockets as well as the rest of the patterns, the pants is not going to fall down. So I'm going to click right on my waistband and then select freeze. Now you see that if I pull my patterns down, it will stay immobile from the waistband. So now we're ready to go in step three and take a look on how to uh, layer the front pockets. You must have already seen that there is a video that exists about layering the front pockets of a denim. Um, this is going to be exactly the same process. Um, so feel free to also check that video if you would like a refresher. But I will go in detail so you shouldn't have, you shouldn't be needed to do that. So the steps uh, or the strategy that we're going to follow is the same as when building the whole denim is that we work from the outside and we build towards the inside. So we're going to start to layer the patterns that is the closest to the shell uh, pattern, so closest to the leg pattern. And if we take a look at our pocket patterns, so this is going to be our pocket bag because this line here is going to be first attached to this line here. So we are going to progressively unfreeze the parts that we will need. So I'm going to go up and I see that I still have my patterns are frozen here. So because the first patterns that I'm going to layer is going to be my pocket bags, I'm going to select both of my pocket bags here in my 2D window click right on one of them, and then select unfreeze, which is right here. Oh, and in my case, just make sure that your simulation is off. So I'll just go back. Again, I'm going to select my patterns, and then click right and then unfreeze. Once they're unfrozen, then we can start to do the sewing so that afterwards we can superimpose them. So I'm going to, in order to do the superimpose, to use the superimpose function, you only need to create one sewing connection. So you don't need to already stitch the whole patterns together. You just need one sewing line. So I'm going to do this one line around the pocket opening right here. So I'm going to select my free sewing tool. I'm gonna to go from the top towards the side. You can go on the other side, it doesn't really matter, as long as you follow the same direction for your second sewing line. And because this pattern piece is going to be pressed flat under this pattern piece, um, and it's going to be pressed flat and turned on this sewing line, I need to make sure that I change my sewing line type here from custom angle to turned. That way it's going to fall flat and nice. I'm going to do the same on the other side, right here, and then right there. And of course, once I finish doing this sewing lines, then I change my sewing line type to turned. Once that is done, then I can select my patterns in my 3D window. I can select both at the same time, then click right, and then select the option superimpose under so that they fall under. In order to have a better view of the inside of my garment, I can hide my avatar by just clicking on this icon here in the vertical toggle menu, or to use the short key Shift A, which is quite useful. So I'm gonna do Shift A, and now I see on the inside, and I'm just going to simulate in order to stabilize um, the drape of those pockets. So it seems stable, but as we see on the inside, it's a little bit wrinkly right here. So in order to unwrinkle the pocket bags, I'm going to click right on both of them and I'm going to select the option strengthen. And now you see that they will become flat and nice inside my pants. So I'm gonna keep it strengthened for a while just because I need to also fold the pockets um, so that we have actually po like pocket bags. 
So for now, I'm going to keep it strengthened. Um, before actually folding the pocket bags, we need to place this pattern, which is going to be sandwiched in between. So I'm going to do the same. I'm going to create one sewing line so that we can do the superimpose function. So I'm going to connect it with the waistband. So I'm going to select my, um, my pattern. So let's see here. Oh, so I see here that my patterns are flipped so I can first flip them. So click right on them and then say select flip horizontally so that oh, or this one here, click right, flip horizontally so that it's on the same direction as my pocket bag and here as well, flip horizontally. And now I can start my sewing. So remember how we left the this part like blank from any stitches on our waistband. This is the time where we're going to stitch it to this pattern, um, to the uh, length that is in between those notch. So I'm going to start from the left to the right. So here I have placed a notch, so I know I have to stop there. And then I'm gonna go from here to here. And this time I do not need to um, turn my sewing line tight because when we take a look, my this pattern is going to be placed um, on the all the way um, on the not under, not over. It's going to be placed on the side of this pattern, so it's going to be going straight down. So I'm going to do the same for the other little pocket part. So from here to there, which is going to be from in between those two notch. So once that is done, then I can select my patterns in the 3D window so I can first unfreeze them. So click right on both of them and then select unfreeze. And I can, while they're both selected, I can click right on one of them and in my right click menu, select the option superimpose side. And you see that it will, sometimes it can happen that it has this kind of twisted look. So you can just replace it a little bit and just simulate. Because again, they're also a little bit wrinkly, what we can do is we can strengthen them. So I'm going to click right on both of them and then select the strengthen option. Now they're completely flat. I can stop the simulation because I see that they're kind of sticking out of the pocket. So I can select one after the other and just try to replace it a little bit on the inside. So like this. Like that, so for this one and this way for the other one. And once that is done, then I can simulate and everything seems stable. I can stop my simulation when that is the case. Now I can, um, I can, um, close my pocket bag because they're still open. So I will close them using the fold arrangement tool. But first, as you see here, I actually need an internal line in order to fold. And as you see right there, this is not an internal line, this is a baseline. So I need to convert this baseline as an internal line. So I'm going to select my trace tool right here, or it's short key I, and I'm going to select both lines here with my shift key and I can press enter and you'll see that they will both turn as internal line. Once that is done, then I can use my fold arrangement tool in the 3D window. I can select one internal line after the other and then depending on um, the way or the where is your front and back of the fabric, you can bring either the green arrow towards the red from the inside or the red towards the green, depending on how it looks like. But I'm going to bring my green towards my red. And as you see, I'm not going to go full. I'm not going to turn it fully. I'm going to stop when I see that it's not merging too much with my pants pattern. And here I need to make sure that I'm closing the angle here so that it falls perfectly flat. So here in my property editor, I change the full angle from the value that you currently have to 
zero. If you see that the value leans more towards the zero, you change towards zero. If it leans more th towards 360, please change to 360. And you have to know that the middle, when the fa fabric is flat, is 180. So I'll do the same on the other side. So here you see the difference is like actually it's the red air um, or like it keep changing the red or green. So here I'll just bring my red arrow towards my green. I'm not going to go too much far in just because I don't want it to merge too much or to collide too much with my external patterns. And I'm going to change my fold angle here to zero. So you should have something like that. Once that is done, then you can simulate and your pocket should fall perfectly flat. And if it's stable, then you can stop the simulation and we can start to do the whole stitching. So to do the stitching, so I see I have multiple stitch lines to create. So I have to actually fit, uh, close um, this little opening right here. So I'm going to select my free sewing tool and it's actually going to stitch this pattern with the yoke and the back leg. So I made myself some notch to help me figure out the length. So I'm going to start from the top to that first notch and that's going to be um, from the top of my yoke to the bottom of my yoke. Then here, so from this notch to the second notch and this is going to be with a stitch to the top part of my back leg, so from here to that notch. Then I can do the same on the other side, so which is this side. So I'm gonna go from here to here, which is to the, the top part of my yoke, to the bottom part of my yoke. And then from the first notch to the second notch, which is the top part of my leg, to, the bottom, uh, to that first notch. Once that is done and I can simulate, and once everything's stable, then we can continue with the stitching of my back, of my pocket bags. So I'm going to stitch the bottom part here, so the pocket back to itself. So because it's fold, folded on, with the, on the internal line, I have to think of my internal line as my center or as the beginning point of my sewing line. So I'm going to go from here to my right. And I'm going to go all around. Then I'm starting back from the center from that internal line to that notch right here. And because the pocket bags is folded or pressed flat to itself, I need to change my sewing line type to turn. I'm going to do the same on the other side. So from here to that notch, from there to this point. And then I'm turning my sewing line type. Then I simulate to make sure things are stable. They look quite stable, which is good. Then I can stitch the rest. So this part here to the side of this little pattern. So I will go from the top to the notch, which is from the top to that notch. And again, I need to turn my sewing line tight because it's folded or pressed flat. On that sewing line here so I can do the same on the other side so the top to the notch and here the top to that notch and I'm turning my sewing line tight then I can simulate and the last thing that I can stitch is my top part of my pocket bag which I can stitch to my waistband so here let's figure out where I have to start so because here this this part here is actually the one that is on the side seam. So I have to look, take a look at which of my notch is the side seam notch. So it's actually for this part, it's going to be this one here. So I'm going to go from the side seam here to the pocket, um, to the pocket, um, uh, to the fold of the pocket. And it's going to be from here from that notch because it's a side seam notch to this blue point because I didn't mark actually the um, um, the ending of my pocket bag. And here I do not need to turn my sewing line tight because it's going to go straight down to the waist, uh, from the waistband. So I'll do the same on the other side. So from here 
to the folded line and then from that notch to the blue dot which will mark the exact same length and then I can simulate and everything seems to be quite stable. Let's see, and if you have something sticking up a little bit, like me, then you can just try to replace it on the inside. Like that. So the next part, so the last part that we need to add for my front pocket is this little coin pocket right here that we haven't added. So the coin pocket is right there. As we see, it's as um, in order to stitch it on this pattern, I need to turn those baseline as internal lines. So I'm going to select my trace tool and I'm going to double click in order to get um, all of those lines selected and I will press enter to turn them as base, as internal lines. Then I will stitch my patterns around. So I'm going to go from here. So first, let me see if it's the same length. Yes, yeah, so it's a little bit too big. So here I can remove this line, which I won't need right there. So here I can stitch from this to here and here to the blue dot here to here, here to the blue dot, and then these to the outline, so from here to here. And for where it's selected on the outline, because it's folded flat, so I'm going to turn my sewing line type. Then I can select my pattern piece in my 3D window to unfreeze it first, so click right, unfreeze, and then I'm going to superimpose it over because it's going to go over this pattern piece. And once that is done, then I can simulate. And once everything is stable, then I can select all of the patterns of my pockets um, that have been strengthened and I can unstrengthen them because now everything is stable and we do not need the strengthening option anymore. So I click right on one of them and select unstrengthen. And I simulate and everything seems stable still. Yeah, so this is uh, for um, this step, so step three. Now we're ready to move on to step four, which is building the zipper fly. So for the zipper fly, we can already start to remove this sewing line that we created, um, remove it partially because we still need to have some kind of, some part of the front crotch to be closed, like especially this part right here. And we can also unfreeze um, our waistband. So I'm going to first start with removing some parts of the front crotch sewing line. So please select your edit sewing tool right here. And I'm going to select this sewing line and then press my backspace button in order to remove it. And I'm going to stitch it again. So I'm just going to stitch this part right here. So I'm going to select my segment sewing tool and I'm just going to click left here and click left there. Just so that I at least I secure this bit. I will then um, unfreeze my waistband. So click right and then select unfreeze. Um, but let's still add some pins just because I'm a bit um, scared that it's going to fall down the, f the floor. So you can select it, uh, you can add pins with your select move tool. You can press your W key in order to select specific pins. So here, so I'm adding them right there like that. Once that is the case, then you can, um, we can open the pens and then we will add the fly. So we will start with um, we will start with this part right here to stitch it to the waistband and to our uh, right leg, right leg pattern. So first, because as I see, I mean, there needs to be a fold on this uh, pattern and this uh, fold needs to be placed on the internal line. And at the moment, this is a baseline. So I need to trace it as an internal line. 
So please select your trace tool and select this baseline right here and then press enter in order to transform it as a internal line. We can do the same for the rest of the um, baselines that we will use for our fly. So this is going to be this line here, this line there, and this line here. So I'm selecting this one, pressing enter, this one pressing enter. Here I'm double clicking because as you see, I have two segments, so I'm pressing then enter. So that way I do not have to go back on my trace tool again. So first let's start stitching this part of the fly. So I'm going to select my segment sewing tool and I'm going to do this um, stitch both of those edges together. So here I click left and here I click left. Then in my 3D window, I will select my pattern. I will click right. I will unfreeze it because I'm going to actually use it. Then I'm going to actually superimpose it on the side. So click right, superimpose side. Just because it's a small pattern piece, um, at this point, like arrangement points are not going to be very helpful. So this is why we use a lot of superimpose. And why do we place it on the side? Because it's not going to be in under. So if I were to place under, it's going to be folded under, which we do not want. And over, it's going to be placed on top folded, which we also do not want. So we want it to be placed on the side like that. So once it's placed, then you can simulate just to make sure that it's um, somewhat secured. And I can stitch this top part here with my waistband before folding it together. So I'm going to select my free sewing tool and I'm going to stitch this tiny top part here to my waistband. So I'm going, I'm going to go from the left to the right to the center point right here, which is going to be from this part of like this notch to this edge. Remember, this is some part that we left earlier on. So from this notch here to this edge. And once I've done that, then I can simulate and things seems to be placed pretty well. Now I can finally fold my this, this pattern piece, but before folding it with my fold arrangement tool, I'm going to add some strengthening in order to, to help it fold better. So I'm going to click right on the pattern and I'm going to select the strengthen option. I'll simulate to make it a little bit more rigid. And now I can use my fold arrangement tool. So select in the 3D window, the fold arrangement tool, then select that internal line and I'm going to fold it towards the inside. So I'm bringing this green arrow towards the red like that. And of course, make sure that then you change the fold angle from the value that you have to zero if it's the back towards the back side touching the back side or 360 if it's the front side of the fabric touching the front side. Then before simulating, I just want to replace it so that it's on the inside of my pants like that. I can even maybe use the gizmo a bit to turn it and just bring it a little bit towards the front like this. Then I can simulate. Everything seems quite all right. And I'm just going to um, secure this fold by stitching um, this back part to the front part. So basically stitching this pattern to itself. So I'm going to select my segment sewing tool and I'm going to stitch this here to this pattern here. And I'm going to turn my sewing line tight because it's pressed flat on the same on itself. And then I stitch and it looks good. Then I can stitch this top part because as you see, this is open. So I can stitch this to here. So of course the notches like or the mark are in the opposite direction because it's folded. And I need to change my sewing line type to turn because it's pressed flat. And I can do the same at the bottom. So I stitch this part to this part and I change my sewing line type to turned. And then you can simulate and everything seems fine. Then I can stitch this pattern um, to my back leg, to my front leg. So this one is quite easy. So I'm gonna follow along the curve. So I'm gonna go from the top to, to the bottom and here from the top to the bottom right here. 
Then again, I can select this frozen pattern in the 3D window, click right on it, select unfreeze, and then click right again, and then select superimpose, this time under, because I want it to be under my leg pattern. Then I can um, stitch the sides um, uh, edges together, so here to here, and because this is folded flat, and we need to change the, the sewing line type to turn. Same thing on the top, so from here to here, and here to here, and I change my sewing line type to turn. Then you can simulate to make sure everything's stable, which it is. And once that is done, then we can um, add our zipper. So I need to, in order to add the zipper, I just need to make sure that it's a little bit more open because um, adding a zipper can be a bit tricky sometimes just because um, this is quite some patterns that are very close to each other. So I'm going to add a pin at the edge of my waistband here and there. I'm going to simulate and I will bring this one a little bit more flat and this one I will push it out a little bit so that I have a better view for my fly. So I can even add one more pin here and push it a little bit like that. Yes. Once that is done, then I can start to add my zipper. So I will add it directly in my 3D window. So here you have the zipper. So I'm going to go from the top to the bottom, about right here. So I'm just making sure that I'm a little bit below this mark because this is where I'm going to have my bar tag. So here, this seems to be good. So when I'm finished my first zipper line, I double click. Then I'm going to go on the inside right here. So I go from all the way to the top and here you should see a blue dot. So it's a little bit hidden, but you see it appear right here. And when you see it, you go to it, you go, you reach, you reach um, to the blue dot and then you just double click to finalize this um, zipper line. So this blue dot basically will allow you to know that you have the exact same distance from one side to the other. So once that is done, then we can remove the pins because otherwise it will create, um, it will be quite tricky for the fly to close itself. So I'm going to select my pin with my um, my select move tool here. This one I can leave, but I will remove this one. And I can simulate to close my zipper like that. Let's see, and if it's not really stable, just stop the simulation and we can try to replace the zipper a bit. So here like that. Let's see if this is better. This looks a bit better. And once I also see that my zipper is flipped, so I just need to select it, click right. And you have this option that's called flip normal, which will allow you to bring it towards the front again, like that. Oh, and I see that my zipper is still a bit twisted. So let's see, also it can happen that the size is, um, it's a little bit, too small, so I might need to change the size of my zipper. So here, let me see if I can replace it a little bit. Ah, yes, seems better. And yes, and here I see that my pocket bags are a little bit out in both cases, um, which can be a bit sometimes problematic, but sometimes you can use strengthen, it will work on its own. Um, but in our case here, if this is really out, then let's see if we can try to place it back in slowly by also opening the pocket right there, like this. Here I can strengthen this part so that it goes on the inside. I will also add a pin so that it stays there and this one I will remove like that. So this looks a bit more stable and I can keep it strengthened so if it keeps on uh, moving out so for the zipper it looks okay but maybe let's see if I can change the size so here it's set up to be a width of 0 0.5 but I can make it a bit bigger at 1 so that it doesn't feel so tight here 
maybe that's a little bit too much so maybe 0 0.5 was still good so it's when it says 0 0.5 it's 0 0.5 for one of the side of the tape like that yeah so this is for the zipper so then i just need to finish the sewing lines here so here i'm going to um, go from here to there which is going to be from here to the blue dot and now it looks a bit better Yeah, so this is the zipper fly that we have um, constructed. So before, um, we're not going to add the button right away. We will add it after, well, we do the fine tuning after adding the internal waistband because we will add um, top stitches, but as well as rivets and buttons. Um, yes, so this is for the zipper fly. So now we're ready um, to move on to the uh, next step which is adding the back pockets the internal waistbands the belt loops and also let's add the button and the rivet there so let's start with uh, let's start with the easy easy part which is the back pocket so it's pretty straightforward here we have um, the lines of our back pockets that are traced as baseline but we need to of course have them transform as internal line so we're going to trace them so please select your trace tool and I can double click on one edge of my um, shape that is on the inside of my pattern in order to select everything and then I will press my enter button or my key and I will do the same on the other side. So here I double click and I press enter. And now I'm ready to start stitching my pocket bags to my internal shape. So I'm going to select them both. Um, then I'm going to unfreeze them. So I click right on one of them in the 2D or in the 3D, doesn't really matter. Then I select unfreeze. Once they're unfrozen, so make sure that your simulation button is off, uh, not like me when I did it last time, so that the pockets don't fall to the ground. And I'm going to start to stitch them um, together. So here I'm going to go from one side and I'm going to go all the way around. And I'll do the same for my internal shape right here. And same thing on the other way here. And then here, so I'm using my free sewing tool. Then I'm going to select them in my 3D window, so select both, then I click right and I say superimpose over because they're going to go over my back patterns. Once that is done and I can simulate and I see that I have my pocket bags. Once I have my pocket bags, then I can do, um, I can add my internal waistband so here it is so i can do the same i can click right on it make sure that your simulation arrow is um, uh, deactivated then select unfreeze then i'm gonna go stitch them around so this time i'm not gonna go and stitch them around the same way as i did for my pocket just because sometimes on those corners it can look like there's a bit of a bubbly effect so i prefer just stitching one side after the other here i'm making sure that once i do one line i turn it uh, i change the sewing line type to turn just because the internal waistband is going to be pressed flat under the external waistband so i do the same here all around to here then i change my sewing line type to turn top to bottom here from top to bottom i change my sewing line type to turn and i go from left to right here from left to right there, and I change my sewing line type to turn. Then I'm going to select my internal waistband. I'm gonna click right and then say superimpose under. 
it will go under. So if that happens, maybe just try to click right again and say superimpose under and it will be placed again nicely. Then you can simulate to make sure everything is stable. It seems stable, which is good. And I can add now my belt loops. So for my belt loops, I um, have them here. So they're also frozen. So make sure that your simulation is off so that you can unfreeze them. So I'm going to select them all at once here and I'm going to unfreeze them. I click right and select unfreeze like that. And here you see that I have a little mark for my belt loops. So, um, and this is, um, these were traced as baseline. So I need to trace them or convert them into internal lines. So I'm going to select one after the other and press enter with my trace tool so that they become internal lines. So one here, one there, one here. And then there's the two remaining ones here and there. Once I've done that, then I can start to stitch them at um, the um, at the bottom. So for the belt loops, um, depending on your style, sometimes it can happen that you have a line here and it's stitched from here to there. So we can do the same actually. So let's see the distance. So it's about 0 0.5. So I can select each of my ends here, here. Then here with my shift key and my edit pattern tool. So this is my edit pattern tool and click right on one of the end and then offset as internal line and we'll offset it at a distance of 0 0.5 centimeters like that. So I'm going to first stitch this um, bottom part then to my pattern edge. So here I'm going to go from one side to the other. And because I don't have a mark, just make sure that you stitch it a little bit right in the front or right on top of this um, of this line. So here I do the same. So from here to there, from here to here. Oh, and one thing that I forgot is because those are actually gonna be turned or gonna be pressed flat from this sewing line, I make, need to make sure that I select my sewing line with my edit pattern tool my sewing tool, sorry, and change the sewing line type here to turns. Just because otherwise it will try to go to stick straight and might not look very flat. Here, then here, then I can continue on for those. So I'm selecting my free sewing tool. So from here to here, then from here to here, then from here to here, here to here. Then from here to here and here to here. And again, I need to select them all here because I didn't change my sewing line type. So I change those. I select both all of them together. Change the sewing line type here to turn like that. So once they're selected, I can there we've done that. We can select them all like this. Click right on one of them and then say superimpose over. Because that way you see they're gonna be placed nicely over. Now we're ready to simulate, so please simulate. Everything seems good. So one thing maybe you see here that you see how it's kind of like going up a little bit. So that's probably because my sewing line types are not properly turned. Oh yes, they are. So it seems quite all right. So let's see. Yeah, so it seems pretty good. Let's just then continue on. So yes, so now what we can do is, as you see here, this is quite a small pattern piece and um, we need to do all sorts of folding and stitching. And um, as I see here, it doesn't look super realistic. It's a little bit angular. So we see really the mesh. Um, so if I change to my mesh view, you see that this is quite big. So what I can do is I can change the particle distance of those small belt loops um, just so that it's easier for me to visualize the drapes. So here I'm going to select them all. And I'm going to change my 
particle distance here from 20 to 5. And if I change it to such a low particle distance for such small piece, it's okay because they're not going to actually move a lot or we're not going to interact uh, with them a lot in a dynamic way. So they're not going to slow down or, um, or work. Um, yeah, so now it seems a little bit more, um, it seems a little bit more realistic. So I can stitch now um, this part to my internal line. So I'm going to go here. So I'm going to go from left click to left click right there. Then again here, left click, left click, here left click, left click. So I'm using my segment sewing tool because this is just one segment stitch to another one. Here, left click, left click. And once that is done, then I can simulate. And now they're stitched together, which is quite nice. Now I can stitch this part right here to my waistband. So for my waistband, I didn't add any marks. So if I want to do it in a more free way, I can do it directly in my 3D window using the free sewing tool. So I'm going to select my free sewing tool and I'm going to start from my belt loops and then attach them to my waistband. So if you're using the free sewing tool in the 3D window, you just have to be careful because in order to end one sewing line, you have to double click instead of doing just one left click. So here I click left and here I double click to complete. And then I'm going to go on the top. So click left and then here I see my little blue dot and I double click. Then here I click left and then I click left and I double click and I can go here and I double click. Then here I click left and I double click. Here I click left and I double click. Here I click left and I double click. I will click left and double click. And again here I click left and I double click. And here I click left and I double click. So because here they're kind of a bit flat, um, if I were to simulate, it might create some kind of collision a little bit. So in order to prevent that, I'm just going to kind of have them folded a little bit more. Um, and in order to do that, we can use our mesh tool. So I can select each of these parts. So for example, this at the bottom here, like that. And I can use my gizmo to fold it a little bit so that it's, we help it uh, move towards the sewing line. So I can do the same on the here, like that. And I fold it, maybe move it a little bit, like that. There's no need to be super perfect. It's just a matter of like, because we do not want to see the sewing lines kind of merging with other patterns. So it's just to help it. Um, figure out its way. So don't worry if you're not that precise for this this part. As long as you see that there's nothing coming in between those uh, colorful lines. Then here again, I'm doing the same. Like that and moving it a little bit. And the last part, this one. So I'll just go all the way on the opposite side. Here, I'm turning around and I'm moving this part like that. So once that is on, then you can simulate and all of it seems to be quite fine, like that. Yeah, and here if it's still a bit twisted, maybe just try to untwist it. Yeah, seems quite good. So this is for the belt loops. And then the last bit that we can add is um, the button for my waistband, as well as the rivet. So for the button, so I'm gonna go on my waistband in the 2D window. So the buttons, you can add it in the 2D or in the 3D, doesn't really matter. Um, but I personally prefer adding it in the 2D window just because I see it flat and it's a little bit easier to find a placement. So I'm going to add my button. So here's my button tool. I select it in the 3D window. So I'll select here and I'm going to place my button. So I made myself a mark. So I'm just going to place it on the middle 
part of that mark. So just make sure that it can be helpful to have a mark. Um, sometimes that it happens that you do not make yourself a mark in another CAD software, but um, just in order for yourself to save some time, it can be quite nice to make a mark for your buttons and buttonhole. So I've made my mark for my button. Now I can switch my tool from the button tool to the buttonhole tool. And I can go right here at the front, a center like that of my of my button, uh, my my buttonhole mark, like this. Then I can close my button, fasten my button to my buttonhole. So I'm going to select my fasten tool, and I can fasten by in a three D or in a two D by clicking first on the bottom and then on the buttonhole like that. Once it's fastened, then I can simulate. And everything seems quite fine. One thing that you can also change for your buttonholes, usually for like a pants, like the button tends to pull a little bit more towards the center front. Um, so here you you can change the binding position. So it's like this real, real green dot that you see right here. So I'm going to select my um, select move button tool select my buttonhole, and here you see that in the property editor, you can change the band position. So I can change from 50 to 25, for example, and you see that it will move the button a little bit more towards the center front. So it can be useful for pens in order to show like the closing pressure of the button. So I can now change the style of my button. So I'm going to go into my default button, which is the one that I have for my my opening. And I can change the shape to something that is a little bit more related to a denim. So maybe this, this type of button right here. Or maybe another one. Let's see. Maybe this one. Yeah, this one seems a bit better. And I can change the color, of course. So I'll place a different color, something a little bit more like, um, let's say, coppery. Something like that. Yeah, and I can change the type aspect, so make it met metal. So I have this kind of metal uh, button. I can then add my um, rivets if I want. So I'm going to create a new button. So I'm going to click on add and I'm going to change the style of this new button. So here the shape I'm going to change to something that is a bit more like rivets. So like this shape, I will change the dimension. So let's try one centimeters. I'm not exactly sure if this is the right one, but let's see. Um, I can pick the same color as I have here. Let's see if this one wants to work, or maybe I'll just select it like that. And again, I will place it on metal like that. Um, then I can start to place my uh, rivet. So I can place one here. Usually this is where you have some rivets placed. So I'm going to place it here. Let's see if one centimeter is not too big. Maybe it's a little bit big. So let me change the shape, the size to um, 75. Let's see. Yeah, it seems a bit better. So I'll place my button here. Then I can move it with the placement like that. Yeah, that seems good. Um, then I will... Um, I will do the same on the other side. So here I'll just select my button tool again. And because this is my button one, which I can call actually, I can double click here and call rivet. It will be placed automatically. So here I can place it. I'll just place them all and then move them once I'm happy of my placement. So I have to place one here and then one there. Usually you have some in the coin pocket. And I can place one as well on, let's see where, on the, on the back of my pockets here. So here, um, maybe on my pocket here, be better. And then here. And then finally here. And then here. And usually you also have one here like that and here like this. Then I can select my select move button tool and just change the placement so that it feels a little bit more better, a little bit better here. Then I'll change the placement of this one here so that it's right at the corner. Then I'll do the same here on the top. 
and for the back pocket like this and like that and for the other side like this and like that great so once that is done then we have placed our rivets and our button and now and we have placed our belt loop and now we can uh, go on to the last step which is um, step six adding fabric fine tuning and top stitches now let's go on and add some fabric so let's go into our library so um, in my case i already had some pre-existing done denim fabric um, but of course if you do not have any feel free to go into our uh, fabric library and uh, find the denim fabrics that we have so the denim raw the denim lightweight or the denim stretch um, up to you but if you have your own feel free to use your own as well so i'm going to go into my fabrics and i'm going to select one of those so I'll probably go with this one um, so because um, I have two different types of fabrics usually on denim uh, one needs to be different for my pocket bags so I'm first what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my fabric uh, from my library drag and drop it in my object browser right here and for the fabric of my pocket bag I'm going to use something quite generic from our fabric library I'm going to go with a cotton um, a cotton oxford for example so i'm going to select all of my pattern and with my shift press i'm going to deselect my pocket bags and then i'm going to um, assign my fabric my denim fabric which is in my case school 07 i can assign it by drag and dropping it on one of the patterns or clicking on this little arrow right here so i'm just going to click on this arrow right there um, I can now also unstrengthen my this part of my pocket bags because I don't really um, need the strengthening anymore. So I click right on one of them and then select unstrengthen like that. And then I can go into my uh, bag on the inside and I will change my pocket bag here to my cotton oxford. So I'll select both and then I apply my cotton oxford right here like that. So one thing that I can see as well is that usually on the waistband, um, this is actually flipped. So this is the, the top or the front side of the fabric should be appearing on the inside like that. So and here I see that this is actually my fabric's backside. So if I want to flip my, fa my, fa my pattern, what I can do is I can click right here and then select the flip normal option. Because in that way, I can um, flip my fabric right here like that and then if I simulate things seems to um, be good yes like this whoops like that yes so now what I'm gonna do is so for this fabric it's fine um, and it seems quite all right so I can also change um, something that I forgot to change I can also change the look of my zipper so here I can change the color of my um, zipper um, the, the my zipper slider and puller I can change the style as well as change the color so here I can take something different, maybe um, something like that, and then something like this. And I can change the color and also have I can put a top a ending for my top and my bottom as well. And I can change the color to something maybe a little bit lighter so that it's similar to what I had like that and change the fabric material type to metal like this. Yes, and I can also change, of course, let's say the color of my zipper teeth. So something to have it maybe on a darker gray like that. So once I've done that, 
then I can see that once I've simulated that the drape has changed a little bit according to the properties of my denim. Um, also, don't for, uh, feel free to also bring it, um, the, um, the patterns or the pants a little bit up because it can have tended to slide down a little bit. So to do that, I can select all of my pattern pieces like this, bring it up a lot, tiny bit, especially that you'll see that here uh, towards the bottom, um, it will not be as stretched out. So here I'm going to also remove all of those pins that I added because I don't need them anymore. So I click right on one of them and select delete all pins like that. All right, so this is for adding the fabric. Now let's say that I want to add the um, add um, some fine tuning, so change the change the um, change the some the thickness of some patterns so that you have a little bit more of uh, of an effect. So I can change um, the rendering thickness of some of the patterns. So this is basically how um, large or how uh, wide your pattern is going to appear. So here, for example, if I change that and I put it to 10, your seagull is going to be very thick. Like that. But of course, we don't want that. That's too thick. So I'm going to change that to, let's say, for this type of uh, pattern piece to 1.5 or 2. So I'll add it to 1.5. Looks a little bit better. So I'll do that for all of the rest of the belt loops. So this is quite a nice uh, trick, especially if you want to make your patterns appear that there's kind of this, uh, the seam allowance has been turned inside and you have this sewing that is taken in um, consideration. So because usually in real life, your sewing lines uh, or your stitches like create this kind of um, depth effect on your patterns. So I can also add some thickness on my uh, internal and external waistband. So I'll select both and I add rendering of one for both, like that. For this coin pocket, I can add also some thickness, maybe two, could be good. Maybe if two is too much, maybe two is still a bit too much, so maybe 1.5 is good. Then here for my back here, I'll add 1.5. And here, because we also want the yoke um, to be on top, uh, like to feel like it's uh, like the seam uh, allowance is folded in the bottom, I add some rendering thickness, so I add one as well. So that it feels a little bit more uh, thick, like that. And that's, and then for the remaining patterns, I can add 0 0.5. So, so that there's still some kind of, it feels a little bit not like a piece of paper, especially when you're going to look at the ankles to so 1.5, 0 0.5, sorry. So that's for the thickness. Um, then in terms of fine tuning, what we can also do is change the, um, change the resolution of your garment. So change the particle distance, change the collision uh, thickness, as well as change the skin offset of the avatar. But um, first, before doing that, I'm just going to add the top stitch because this part is done strictly at the end. So now I can go on to add my top stitches. So let me um, remove my internal lines. So I have a better view. So let's add some really fun, uh, maybe create some really high contrast with my top stitch and add a really dark top stitch so that I can really see the contrast with my um, different, with my fabric. So I'm going to go in my top stitch here and I'm just going to select first the default top stitch and I'm going to select a darker color. So here I'll just select something like that. This seems good. And I will just add one. Um, so I'll just do, so this is one I'm going to call one end. So for one stitch, um, and let me change some of the parameters. So I'm going to change the offset. So let's see how it is at the moment, 0 0.16. So I'll change to 0 0.2. Then I'm going to change the spacing here so that I have a little bit, so my stitch lines um, or my top stitch doesn't feel so tight. So I'll change to 0 0.05. I'll change my thread thickness so that it looks a little bit more thick, like 
denim uh, stitches so I'll change it to 80 here and then for the rest let's see how this looks first and then let's change for the rest so I'm going to add it first on my waistband around my waistband so here so I'll go around uh, with my free top stitch tool so I'll select this one and I'm just going to go around here and I see it here so maybe I can make it a little bit more thick so here I'm going to change the thickness to maybe 120 and I'm also going to change the uh, length stitch per inch to maybe something a little bit more wide like um, like something like 10 so that seems good um, then I can let's see is this um, maybe a little bit too close so let's see if I can change the here to 0 0.25 how it will look yeah it will look all right then I am going to add this type of top stitch to my belt loops as well so I'm going to use my free top stitch this time um, or my, uh, my segment top stitch this time and I'm going to add it on both sides let's see how it looks like yeah pretty good here and here 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 and then I'm doing I did it all yes and I can also add this one single top stitch to my back here so I'll again um, select my free top stitch tool and I'll go all the way around my internal my internal waistband like that and I can one add also um, and yes so that seems um, pretty good yes I can also add one usually there is one that goes all the way down here on the front leg so let me bring it so that I have a better way so I made a little mark here for where I will have a bar type which I will add later on like this and then like that and then I can go on to make another top stitch which is going to be a 2N so I'll select this one I will copy it and this one I'm going to call 2N because I want it to be a double stitch so then I'm going to go all the way down in my configuration you see here that you can change the number of lines so I'm going to add 2 and I will let, leave the differences of 0 0.63 which is pretty good let's see later on if I need to change that so I'm going to add it around my pocket opening so I'm going to select my free top stitch tool and add it around like that like this then do it on the other side like that I might need to replace my buttons so that they are they stay right in the middle like this like that so then let me continue on with my top stitches um, then I can also add it here and what is quite nice is I can decide where to place it to place it so I can flip the placement so that it's on the inside of the line like that and I can also place some top stitch around my pocket here like that again maybe replace the button a little bit that seems to be good yeah good enough then I can do the same for my back here like that and like this like this here and like that as you see right here and again if needed I can replace my buttons a little bit so that it feels a bit more centered in the middle of my top stitch maybe replace it, replacing it again yeah seems good and I can add it at the top of my yoke so here and then here and then along my um, center back uh, line like that 
and I can also add it on the inseam of my bag. So from here and also here, as you usually have in a pants pattern, like that. So it seems to be quite good. I'm just missing here some double stitch like that too. And I can also place some um, stitch on the front as well here. So here and then all the way down here. And do the same on the other side here to all the way down here. Yes, so we have it here. Um, now, so this is quite, um, quite good. I'm just missing one single stitch here for my fly. So here I can place it. So I'll go on to this here. See, maybe that's not the right line. So here, like that, yeah. And maybe as well right here around here. So let me add some some stitch like that. Yes. So now we have added all of those um, single and um, double stitch. Uh, we can also add um, some bar tack. So I've added some placement for the bar tack um, as baseline here, so I need to trace them as internal lines. So I'm just going to select all of those little lines here, and it's also one here. Press enter. And I'm going to create a new bar tack. So I'm going to select this one N. I will add a new one, and I'm just going to call it one N bar tack. And this one, because I want to place it completely on the line, I'm going to change the um, I'm going to change the uh, offset to just zero. I'm also going to um, change um, the shape to bar tack, and I'm going to use the same. Uh, um, let's check the the different uh, change a bit of the thread thickness and put about the same color that I already had. So maybe I can just register this color. So select this color, click on add, so it's here. Then I can move to my bar tag here and then change the color to the one I've added. So I can then add my little bar tag. So here to my segment top stitch. So here I have a bar tag, bar tag that has been added here as well on the side and here too. So here you see them added. I can also add some bar tack. Usually you also have some on the belt loops at the top and the bottom, depending on the style. Doesn't necessarily need to need to be. Um, but this time, because I want it to be a little bit over this internal line, I'm just going to select it and I'm going to create an offset. I'll call it offset um, 0 0.15 centimeter. Let's see if this one will work. So here I'll say 0 0.15. So now let's try, and it looks good, like that. So I add it for all of the bar tags here, and then here, oops, not here, here, and then here, here, and then here, here, and then here. And I just forgot this one here, like that. Yeah, so now we have added all our bat bar tack and it seems that we have also added all of our top stitch. Oh, maybe we can also add, like if you really want to be <clears throat> working in the detail, we can also add some top stitch around our pocket, so maybe an overlock. So I'll just select my one end here, just copy it, and I'm going to call it overlock. Overlock, like this. So I'm going to change the shape to overlock. I'll make sure to change the color so it's the same as the other one. Like that. And I will change the thread thickness so it's a little bit more thick to maybe um, 80. 
and now let's try to place it so i'm just going to because i just want to have a visual of the overlock i'm just going to place it around um in the, the back here so i'll select my free sewing tool and i'll just place it like that so from here to here this is going to be good enough here and then from here to here like that and if in our case it has not been created let's see I like that over lock so here I can just drag and drop it and just make sure that I change the the shape and here change the number of life to one and let's see if this one wants to work yes it works and I'll just change the color again like that so yeah so now we have our overlock and we have our all of our top stitches maybe I can also just last last one add one here at the bottom um, as you usually do have um, I'll take this one end and make a copy and just change the offset to maybe one centimeter one centimeter so here I'll select this one and then change the offset here to one and then yes and then go on all of my butt bottom hem and just add this add this top stitch here all right so once we've done that we are pretty much done with all of the constructions of our pants um, the last thing that you can do is then uh, bring your pants to a high-res mode so by clicking on this little button which is the high-res garment uh, button and you see that you'll be able to change the high-res properties um, of the um, the of the garment so change the particle distance to five the change the, the thickness collision to one and change the skin offset to zero and also will bring the simulation quality to fittings so you just have to click on OK and yes and the last tiny bit that I want to do is also change the color of my buttonhole tiny detail that could be quite nice to have yeah like this and once you've changed the then that then you can simulate and just wait for your pants to uh, um, figure its final drape so yeah so this is going to be it for this video um, I will thank you a lot for watching um, this is of course um, just take a look at the construction of a denim um, if you find on the Clo website we already or the Clo YouTube uh, page we already have a, a few videos that explain all of the different types of textures and washing effects for denim um, so feel free to check those videos uh, out and you will be able to find the links of those videos in um, the YouTube um, the description of, um, of this video so feel free to take, check those out to have a really complete and realistic uh, look for your denim pants. So again, thanks for watching and see you in another video.